Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part 10 of our framework design and development video series. So in this part, we are going to talk about creating a custom test in g.xml file using Java. So if you recollect part 9, we discussed how to work with test ng, how test ng runs the test using at test annotations, and also how we can run multiple methods using test ng.xml file. And also we tried to retrieve the automatically created test ng.xml file from the temp folder and pasted that into our project folder and then using test ng suit we ran the test using test ng. So in this part instead of manually creating an XML file with all the method names we are going to do a custom library which will read the data from an Excel sheet and then paste these method names into our testng.xml file. So let's get started. Testng runs test by either creating a testng.xml file automatically based on the test methods in the class or it runs from the specified testng.xml file as we discussed in part 9. So in order for us to create a custom testng.xml file we need to write a Java code to create XML file based on the method name which we are going to execute. We are going to hold all the method names in an Excel file and we are going to read that Excel file and create the testng.xml file using our Java code. So what we are going to do here is we are going to have a Excel file with all the method names which we are going to execute and also we are going to set the flag for that whether we are going to execute that particular method or not. So here we will have all the controls. It acts like a switch for us to turn it on and turn it off the execution of a method. So if we don't have this kind of functionality then if we want to execute multiple tests using testng.xml then every time we need to either comment the code or manually create the testng.xml by editing the xml file to have include or exclude in the tags as we discussed in part 9. So instead we are going to write a custom library which will hold all this test method and we can control the execution of the test method using this particular switch. Okay, so let's not waste our time. Let's jump into Eclipse. So this is the same project which we are working from part one and it has the Excel libraries and also the test caller.java class file which we were working in part nine of this video series. All right, so we also did in the part 9 that we, we ran the test using this particular test ng.xml file and then we executed this test using this xml file. All right? So I'm not going to care about this xml file right now. Just going to close that. So let's write the custom library for reading the data from an excel sheet and converting that to an xml file. So for that I'm going to create a class. I'm going to create that within this DDT itself. So let's name this as xml future. Right, and finish. So this will create me a class. So for the sake of time, I have written a whole long code right here. So I'm gonna just copy this code and I'm gonna just paste it as it is. That's it. The only thing which I'm missing here is the get flagged method, okay, which is available in the Excel. Of course, this method is not written, so I'm gonna again copy paste the code from here. To my Excel library. So let's let's paste it somewhere here. Alright, so if we go to the XML you do now if I save it, yep, all the errors are gone. So it seems to be good right now. Okay, so before starting this project, I actually created a folder here called resources, and there are three XLS files. So let's open and see what these folder contains. So this folder actually contains this initial.xls, test method 1 and test method 2.xls. So if you open this xls file, I have the function names here like test method 1 and test method 2. So which are method you're going to execute, you can execute that. And there is a column called flag. So if you set this flag to y, y for these two methods, then these two methods will be executed. And since each and every method will relay on a separate XLS file for its data input, I have also added a column called Excel name. And this is the data source 
for this particular method sounds great right so that even if your data changes for each and every method you can control that in this particular column itself so that's the kind of modularization we need to bring in for our framework all right I'm gonna save this I'm gonna close it here so let's go to the Eclipse and we'll just quickly run through this code what it does so create XML method what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to read the initial dot XLS file from here and then as you know we are just opening this Excel lib as discussed in data driven testing using Excel uh, in part 8 all right so I'm just passing the XLS path here and also I'm populating all the column names using this uh, column dictionary method all right and then I'm just trying to build a XML file using document builder factory right and also if you could see here I'm grabbing all the flagged methods the flag method is y here so whichever value has y in it so only those methods will be retrieved so if you go to this method you can actually understand what it is so what I'm trying to do here is I'm looping to all the values using this row count of the Excel sheet and then I'm just getting the column name whose value has got so this column name is nothing but the flag and whose value has got y in it which means if the flag value is y only those methods are put into this flagged method hash table actually this flagged method is nothing but a hash table which holds all the values the key value pairs so that's being saved right here in this get flagged method right so let's go back to this XML util so all these flagged methods are there I'm going to parse all the flagged methods into my XML files there are some of the important steps we need to take while creating an XML file if you could see here we need to have this XML encoding and also the suit name and the test and within the test there is a classes and within the classes there is a class node and within the class node there are method node methods node and within the methods node there are include here what I'm trying to do is I'm just creating a element called suite and within the suite I'm adding a, a parameter all right so this parameter will actually hold the elements uh, like the methods as you can see here so it has tests it has classes and it has class so the hierarchy which we are discussing in the XML file so I'm just creating the hierarchy of the XML file here and I'm just hard coding the org.pom.test caller here as of now this is just for now for this demonstration purpose remember this is a hard coded value what I'm, all I'm trying to do here is I'm just going to execute all the methods which is listed in this particular class file alone if tomorrow your framework grows bigger and if you have multiple classes and if you have multiple method in each and every classes then surely this code is not going to work for you so you have to change this code by the time so just for this demonstration purpose I have hard coded the class name itself great so within this class we have a method stack and within this method stack we have set the name of the root element as selenium job framework and test ng oh, sorry testing and then we're going to pop, put all the values of the methods here and then I'm going to save this test ng.xml file into the resources folder so once the method is executed XML file will be saved in this resources folder all right so right now there is no XML file so once this code executes the, the file will be placed there all right great and then we're just closing the stream and also the transformer factory here. this will actually generate the XML file that's it so this is the code for creating the XML and also reading the data of the flagged values from Excel file right great so how do I call these methods how do I execute this so for doing that I'm going to the test caller Java all right so I'm going to use a annotation here called before and I'm just going to save this and I'm going to name this as public void initiate so I'm just trying to see if the testng.xml file has been created in the resource folder right so for that I'm going to say like xml util uh, dot create XML so it says to add 
declaration here with exception. Great. And now if I execute this test, all right. So as you can see here, it's again running both the tests since uh, it is running the XML file from a temporary folder location, right? But if you can refresh this particular resources folder, you can see that we should have a XML file. Hmm. So where is that? Okay, let me go to the resources folder here. Oops, it's not coming up. Maybe this method is not being called. Let's put before class. And if I run this right now. All right, so the before annotation is not being called. Maybe before is coming from J unit. I'm so sorry for that. It's coming from a J unit framework. So that's why it is not being called when running uh, test ng. All right. So, so this is the XML file which is being created automatically. So as you can see here, the XML file is there. So if I open with the notepad and if I set the language as XML, oops, it is not been formatting. Uh, so let's go right here. And as you can see here, it has the parameters. So the one which value we set there. So for each and every test method, I'm setting the resources which I'm going to use and then there is a test name as testing and there is a classes within classes there are class attribute and within class attribute there are methods and within methods attribute there are include with all these two methods oops as you can see here all right so the test ng.xml file is generated automatically using our code right and the next question is, how do I run this XML file? How do I call this testng.xml file, right? So for that, I have written one more method. As you go to the XML util.java, you can see there is a method called auto run XML. So what it does is, it will get the list of files, right? So right now we have only one testng.xml file. So I'm just getting it. And then there is a class called testng. It is coming along with our testng suit. So testng tng is called new testng. So within this testng, I need to add the files as a suits. So I'm adding the suits. Remember while we're running the testng.xml, we right click that and we went to runners and testng suit, right? The same thing we need to do right here also. So I'm setting it as testing the suit and I'm setting the files there. And then I'm getting, I'm calling the run method from the test ng instance, right? So if I do this, it will execute the test. So now if I go to the test ng caller.java and then from here, if I call this XML util dot auto run dot XML and if I save this what will happen is every time this XML file will be created and it will execute but there will be a problem and if I run this test you will understand what it is so now if I run this test ng dot XML file you can see that it's keeping on running this XML file for me it's because both the classes the art oops let me stop this it's because both the caller and the test ng which is calling the instance itself are in the same place so if we put this surely the test ng get confused and it don't know which xml file to call so it's calling both the xml files and every time it is initiating this method and also this guy is calling this methods to be executed so this will not work if we put both these methods right here so for that i'm going to copy this code maybe cut this code and delete this method so I'm not use this anymore. Google search test Java here, right? Let me comment out this code fully. Maybe I'm not going to use it right now. So I'm going to paste this code right here. All right, and it will add me to add the exception handling stuff there. Okay. Now, if I right click this and run this as a Java application, you can see that only it will be calling to execute only these two methods 
And note the important point here is it is running the decolon automation slash POM slash resources slash testng.xml file. So it's actually calling our XML file, which is available right here. Right? So now let's test whether the flagging option is really working or not. So I'm going to this XLS file. And if I change this flag to N, which means I'm not interested in running this method. Right, I'm going to save this thing and I'm going to close it right here. And let's go back to our main method and right click this. And if I run this as Java application, you can see there is only one method being called, which is test method two. So, test method one is not executed since we have switched the flag off there. So, that's the power of our custom library, which will actually turn your test based on the flag which you are setting in your. Excel file. Great, right? So now you are creating a custom testng.xml file by reading the data from the Excel sheet. So that's great, guys. So we have written all the bits and pieces of creating our big framework, which we are going to create in upcoming videos of this video series. So please make sure that you read all the parts before we jump into the next video of the video series because that part is going to be a collection of all the bits and pieces of these videos and the work we did so far in this framework. All right, if you really like these videos and the videos I'm going to create, please hit like button in the YouTube there and also leave your comments if I need to improve somewhere. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.